Well, welcome back. This is John, Survivalist 2008. And we've got the one tube regenerative receiver out again. And by the looks of the QST magazine in front of you, you can see that we're going to be taking a listen to the 2014 Field Day event that's taking place right now. It's uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning. So 75 meters is active, and it's flat full of contesters from all over the North American continent. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to tune through the band and show you, and you just watch, and I'll be adjusting the three controls and maybe even the audio from the Radio Shack Mini Amplifier. But we'll be adjusting through the tuning control, the regenerative control, and also the antenna trimmer. And you'll notice that the antenna trimmer actually works very much like a fine tuning knob. So you're going to be hearing some squeals, some kind of a high pitched noise. That's kind of natural uh, with the regenerative radio. I don't hear it so much to the human ear, but when you record it, it picks it up more. Plus, you've got a lot of uh, QRM and activity on the band, so there's going to be a lot of heterodynes and high-pitched uh, noises, so kind of overlook that. So I'm, I'm going to just stop talking now and start tuning, and we'll just let this video kind of run for a few minutes. Not sure how long. We'll just see how long. Of course, I'm going to be using my homemade tuning adjustment. And what this does is to help elim eliminate capacitive coupling that occurs if I touch it with my hand. It makes it much easier to tune with this little cheap device that I built out of a prescription bottle. All right, here we go. Let's see what we can find. I'm going to start off with the uh, antenna trimmer. Now 
Now you'll see that this radio is amazingly selective and sensitive. Although it is prone to picking up kind of a wide bandwidth, so if there's a strong station nearby, it's going to swamp over this station that I'm listening to. But you do have to work with, once you get your frequency set here with the tuning capacitor, it's almost like it chooses the section of the band that you want to monitor. Then you'll work between the fine tuning or the antenna tuner and the, re and the regenerative control to kind of tune it in. And of course you may have to adjust the volume. That's a pretty good signal there. Now I'm going to demonstrate something. Now I can adjust the frequency slightly by using the regenerative control. Let's see if he'll come back in. Notice? Well, let's try something quickly here. I'm going to change the band. I'm going to move up the band or move down the band. Not sure how this works here, but let's see what we can do. Turn the volume up a little. Yeah, I moved it up a little. Or down. I'm not sure. I think I probably went up. And this section is where some rag chew conversations go on. Probably higher in the band. K4 Whiskey Charlie. Coming in coming in loud. We'll turn this down and just comment a little bit about the regenerative radio. The B battery pack, which is actually not, uh, 10 9 volt batteries, and I've got two taps. I've got a tap at the center for about 45 volts, and I've got a tap at the end for 90 volts. Now the batteries are running a little bit weak. I had been running on the center tap at 45 volts, but it dropped a little. So I went ahead and popped it up to the 90 volt section, and it's running probably in the mid 80 volts now. I put four brand new batteries in the uh, A pack. They were a little bit low, below 6 volts, and I put some fresh uh, batteries in, and it's running at a good 6 volts now. If you'll notice the this particular antenna coil. Now I don't know how many might be watching this that might want to build their own unit. This is a great little project and I hope you build yours that look better than mine. Take a look at Microtech 1 and look how he's got a Bakelite clipboard and he has a really nice vernier dial. I've considered doing that but I went ahead and went a very basic design on this radio. But take a look, I don't have very many uh, turns for the antenna coil. Now notice the spacing between the antenna coil and the tickler coil. The tickler coil may have four uh, turns on it. That's kind of critical. If you get this coil way down here, it's not going to pick up the uh, inductive coupling from this coil because that's what it does. The circuit an, uh, initially sends the signal. Of course, part of your LC circuit is your coil, and the other part is your tuning capacitor. Well, 
this coil is what's actually the original coil that is picking up and is radiating that inductive signal that this coil, the second coil, is picking up inductively and sending it back through the 6BF6 for reamplification. And if this coil is too close, probably not going to hurt, but if this second coil is too far down, it may not pick up uh, what you need from this antenna coil. So that's a little something uh, as far as that concern. Now let me turn the volume up. I have a switch on the back that adds extra capacitive capacitance to this tuning capacitor. I'm going to demonstrate, reach around and switch it on and see if it changes the frequency. I'm going to wait till that ham comes back in. Notice it changed the frequency. That was no extra capacitance. And that's some additional capacitance. And we're back to the original capacitance of just the uh, tuning capacitance. Okay. Well, that kind of does it now for this particular demonstration. I hope you'll take a look at part one and part two, where I have actually uh, made some uh, copy down of some stations on field day. And uh, it's a little bit noisy, but hey, that's the uh, that's the way a regenerative radio works. And you also have a lot of noise on the band now because hey, it's field day and everybody's on the band. So uh, 73. Thanks for watching the Survivalist 2008 channel, and we'll catch you on down the log.